got your Bibles there, if you would, let's grab them, let's stand, and reverence to read the Word of God. We're going to be turning to 1 Timothy chapter 3 this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 14. We're going to read three verses there. Get it if you can. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 14. Book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 14. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 here this morning. Looking there in verse 14 through 16. The Bible tells us here in verse 14 of 1 Timothy chapter 3. It says, These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you now, Lord, for this time and opportunity we have to open up the Word of God. I'm so grateful this morning that you have given us your Word. We pray this morning that that Word may move, Lord, about and in us, around us. Lord, do exactly what you said it would do, not return void. We ask you, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to our hearts. Lord God, that you would stir inside our souls. Lord, that you do the work that only you can. Do for us what men can't do. Do for us what we can't do for ourselves, Lord. I ask you, Lord, Heavenly Father, you get all the glory, all the honor from it. Hide us now behind the shadow of thy cross. Lift up thy dear Son, Jesus, that all men may behold and see him. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ for his glory, for his honor. Amen. Amen. Be seated. We're looking here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. And we notice here in the passage, the Bible says these things right unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. And notice here he says, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, and the pillar and ground of the truth. I want to emphasize that phrase this morning. That thou may knowest how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. How we should behave ourselves in the house of God. And then we are reminded the house of God is the church of the living God. It's his church, amen. And we're reminded that it is the pillar and the ground of the truth. It is the only foundation of the truth that this world has. The pillar and the ground of the truth. The foundation isn't right, and nothing else is stable, is it? So my dear friend, the Bible tells us the church is the church of the living God. It is the pillar and the ground of the truth. But he gives this phrase to us, and I want to preach on this little thought for just a few moments if I can this morning. How we ought to behave ourselves in the house of of God. How we ought to behave ourselves in the house of God. We can go in a lot of different directions with this title this morning, but I want to give you a few little things here this morning and uh, hopefully a, uh, a, a light way, yet a, uh, a way that is enlightening at the same time, but I believe it will be a blessing to you and just listen for just a few moments. You might get a chuckle or two out of a couple things i got to say, but at the same time, uh, there is much truth in what I'm saying this morning. Uh, every good joke has a little bit of truth in it, doesn't it? All good preaching has truth in it. There isn't any good preaching without truth. But we find in Matthew chapter 21, we're going to read a few passages to this morning. I want to talk about how we ought to behave ourselves in the house of God. I'm going to say this. This is really not a part of the message, but let's be free for you as we get going here this morning. But, you know, there, there's certain ways that we definitely ought to behave ourselves in God's house. There's ways that we shouldn't behave ourselves in the house of God. We ought to be respectful and mindful, no doubt, of the house of God. I believe in that this morning. 
We've got to teach our children to be respectful and mindful. I know kids are kids, and they're not always perfect. I understand that. And we love kids around here, amen. And we're not uh, uptight about children and those kind of things. But uh, we know this this morning that the house of God is a special place, amen. It's not our living room. Uh, it's not the playground. It's not a lot of different places. But it is the house of God. It is the pillar and ground of truth. And I'm thankful for the house of God. I'm thankful for the sanctuary when He comes to meet with the congregation of the righteous. Amen. And comes, my dear friend, to call and compel sinners unto Himself. What a place, the house of God. First of all, let me say to you here in Matthew 21, and verse number 13, the Bible says, And said unto them, it is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Let me say, first of all, this morning, the house of God, how we ought to behave ourselves in it. Let me say, it's a praying house and not a playing house this morning. God's house is a house of prayer. It's a place where we pray. And a lot of times we think about playing, we think about children. And I'm not talking about kids this morning, amen. A lot of times we think about kids playing around stuff. I remember when I was a kid growing up in church, I played with my fingers like they was army men. Uh, you know, I, I'd done all kinds of things in the seat. My mom would bump me in the ear, you know, and, and she would put her arm around me like she was being real loving. Everybody else seen that, but she was really pinching me, amen. <laughs> Trying to get me to straighten up. I mean, I experienced all those things, amen. And if I made one single odd face or looked at her in a weird way, she's telling me, I'm going to get you when I get home. <laughs> amen. And so anyway, she tried to straighten me out, no doubt, in the house. I thought, I like to play around. Now, that's not the kind of playing I'm talking about this morning. The Bible tells us that his house is a house of prayer. It's not a place to come and, as we call it, play church, amen. We come, amen, to worship the Lord and to pray. And truly, there are burdens when people come to church. So a lot of times, I'm telling you, this world is a heavy world. And if uh, there's ever a place we ought to be able to come and, and smile a little bit, amen, have a few laughs. There's nothing wrong with that. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And my dear friend, hear the truth of the Word of God and get serious and lay our burdens before the Lord. Well, this is the place that we ought to be able to do that, amen. This is the place that we ought to be able to come and be comfortable to come and pray unto God and not think, oh, well, I'm not going to the altar because somebody's going to look at me odd. Somebody's going to look at me funny. They're going to think something's wrong with me. They're going to think that I'm not right because I go down the altar. Listen, my dear friend, this is a house of prayer. We ought to always have a mind of prayer. We ought to always have an openness to prayer. But I always be willing and able to come to the altars of God. I don't care if it's in the middle of preaching. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle of singing. If it's in the middle of announcement, say, man, if you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar any old time here because this is a house yeah. of prayer. If you want to make an altar right there in your seat, amen. Amen. I say to you this morning, it is a house of prayer. I'm saying to you, this is not a playhouse. It's a praying house. Yeah. And it ought to be such. How we ought to behave ourselves in the house of God. We don't have a time clock out there, so I don't uh, write each one of your names on it, and then you go and punch in, and I make sure you know everybody was at work on time. Hey, everybody uh, made it on time, and uh, we don't write pay checks out, amen, to come to church. But I'm saying to you, my dear friend, this morning, it's just as important. It's more important than uh, work that ever has been or ever will be. And I'm just saying to you this morning, this ought to be a house of prayer. It's not a playhouse. It's a praying house. Amen. Thank God for a house of prayer. Thank God for a place we can come and lay our burdens before the Lord. Not only is it a praying house, but let me say to you on this morning, it's not a gossip house. It's a gospel house. Amen. God has given us a house for the gospel. My dear friend, I understand that we are human beings and people say things you ought not to say sometimes. But I want to say something to you, my dear friend, this morning. I don't want this ever to be a gossip house. I don't want this ever to be uh, about, uh, you know, did you see what so-and-so was wearing? Uh, did you see what so-and-so, did you hear about what they done? Did you hear about uh, what they said? I don't want it to ever be a place filled with gossip, but I want it always to be a place filled with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not a place to come and gossip. I'm not saying we have a problem with that, but I don't want to have a problem with that either, amen. I want to remind you, this is the house of God. This is where the gospel is preached. This is where Jesus Christ is exalted each and every week, amen. This is not where we tear each other down. This is where we lift up Jesus Christ. And then he reaches down and lifts us up. 
where we cannot go to new heights. Amen. Without Him. And so my dear friend, I'm saying to you this morning, this is a place of the gospel. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 said, And He said unto them, Go ye into all the world. And you know what He told them to do? He didn't say go and entertain them. He didn't say go and even sing them a song. And I love singing, amen. And we ought to sing, amen, to the Lord. And we ought to praise Him. All those things. But you know what He told them to go do? He said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said every single human being on this earth ought to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ because I have sent you to the world to preach the gospel. Paul called himself a preacher of the gospel. <laughs> He's a preacher of the gospel. And my dear friend, that's what God has called us to do. He has called us to preach the gospel. This is a gospel house. This is a place where people can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. That yes, we're sinners. And yes, we're full. And yes, we have problems. But yes, Jesus Christ did die for those sins. He did die for those falls. He did die for those problems. And He's willing to cleanse us and to save us and to make us whole and give us a new start. Yeah. Because that's the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is our hope this morning. There is no hope in the dope. There is no hope in the rope. And there sure isn't any hope in the Pope this morning. But there is hope in the gospel. Amen. Thank God. There is hope in the gospel this morning. I'm trying to tell you the gospel of Jesus Christ is to be preached in His house. It's the gospel house. Not the gospel house. And then the next thing I want to remind you of this morning, this is a preaching house. Kind of goes along with it, but it is a preaching house. It's not a social house. Now let me say to you, there's nothing wrong with socializing. I like socializing. As a matter of fact, I believe the church ought to provide some social uh, abilities and activities to be able to fellowship and get together and talk and even have a good time. Sometimes we have outings. This year's been an odd year. We had to be able to do a lot of things that we normally do, and I miss that. And we need to be able to fellowship around the Lord and fellowship with other believers. And so, but I'm saying to you, the house of God was never formed or created to become a social club. This is not a social club. This is not what the house of God is for. Nothing wrong with socializing. I'm not preaching against socializing one bit this morning. I want to socialize. I love to socialize. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that one with another. But it wasn't created for socializing only. It was created to preach the word of God. He told young Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. Doctrine. That's what he said to do. And so, my dear friend, this is a place where the gospel ought to sound, and we ought to emphasize and continue to emphasize, which we do, the word of God. To have a place to hear the word of God, a place to hear the preaching of the word of God. I know preaching's not popular anymore. I, I'm not up here uh, with my head in the sand and realizing and thinking that preaching is the most popular thing that people love. I know that's not the most popular thing that people love anymore. I know that's not A1 on the list, but I'm saying to you, we should never take it down off that list because God told us to preach the word. He told us to send the preachers and they're to preach the word of God. And my dear friend, thank God for a preacher who's faithful we in and week out. I remember when I was growing up, I want to thank the Lord that I had a preacher that mount the pulpit whether I wanted to listen or not, whether I wanted to be there or not, whether I cared to hear him or not. Thank God for a preacher that preached the word. Amen. I know we like motivational speakers nowadays, and that's the popular ones in the crowd nowadays. They love the motivational speaker, but that's not preaching. We need to get back to preaching in this country. We need to get back to preaching in our churches. Thank God for preaching. Thank God that He's given us a place to preach the Word. And guess what? If I didn't have a pulpit up here to preach the Word from, I'd make me a pulpit somewhere else to preach the Word from. Whether that's outside or inside or wherever else that might be. Listen, my dear friend, we ought to have a place as a preacher to preach the Word. Nursing home, jailhouse. It doesn't matter what it is. Listen, if we're a preacher, we ought to preach God's Word. Amen. That's what the world needs today. Thank God for a house. Wherein preaching is emphasized. The third thing I want to say to you real quickly this morning, I was going to give you a description of that, but I'm going to move on here just real quickly this morning. I want to say this this morning, this house 
is a salvation house. It's a birthing house. It's not a sleeping house. Amen. You say, preacher, I can't even sleep. You're too loud. Amen. <laughs> I have seen some preachers, some people that can sleep in my preaching too, by the way. That's pretty good. Amen. They got, <laughs> they got a high level of need of sleep. Amen. <laughs> they sleep there. But anyway, kids, you know, that happens. That's just, you know, that's, that's that. Little kids, they're going to sleep sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Little kids fall asleep. That's what they do sometimes. But I've seen some adults. Of course, then there's some people. I know. I remember a fellow I had in Kentucky there. Great man, him and his wife. Uh, Love the Lord, always doing something. But his name was Junior Porter. He fell off a, a ladder a few years ago and, and passed away. Uh, but Junior, uh, I love Junior to death. And Junior uh, had a, a, a problem where if he sat down, it didn't matter where he was at or what he was doing, he'd immediately fall asleep. That was just a condition he had of some sort. Some people have those kind of problems. And anyways, he sat down and he would go to sleep. And so he was constantly always working. When he was at his house, he had a little garage out there, a little small garage. And uh, he worked out there all the time. And he never went to sit down on the couch, never watched TV, nothing like that, because he fell asleep. That's all he done. So therefore, he was always having to move and always having to do something. And, and so uh, he forewarned me when I first came there. I was thinking, yeah, that sounds like a good excuse when he first told me. But I realized, hey. That's real. This is real. It's, he really does have this kind of condition, you know. And so he said, preacher, please don't think anything about it. If I have to get up and move around, he said, because I'll fall asleep. And so, anyway, of course, we had speakers and stuff throughout the building. But uh, he would uh, go do something down in the kitchen, or he'd go do something down in the basement where the Sunday school room was a little bit, and then he'd come back and sit down for a little bit. You can see him look like he's going to nod off. He'd get up and go do something else. But he was always good. He's been sitting in the very back. He didn't really, worry, didn't, really didn't bother anybody, or uh, they couldn't hear him and all that kind of stuff. But he was always moving, always always doing something, always need to do uh, uh, something to keep from falling asleep. But, and in the typical way, this is not a sleeping house, amen. This is not a place to come get our afternoon nap, amen. Even if I do go in the afternoon. <laughs> this is a place, amen, uh, to be able to come and, my dear friend, see people birth into the family of God. It ought to be a birthing center. This is a hospital for the lost for the main, for those, my dear friend, who has a condition, the worst kind of condition, the worst kind of disease that each and every one of us was born with, by the way, and that disease is sin this morning. But this is a place where we can come and we can hear how to be cleansed from our sins. Or we can hear how to be saved by the grace of God. It's a salvation house this morning. John chapter 3 told us very plainly, you must be born Again, and I love what uh, uh, Whitfield had to say. They kept on asking, he said, why do you keep on preaching, George Whitfield, about you must be born again? He said, it's very simple. Because you must be born again. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's not that complicated this morning. We must be born again. We must be saved by the grace of God. We must personally accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as the substitute for our sins. He has offered us pardon through Jesus Christ and we can accept that this morning or reject that. That is our choice that God has given us. But there are great consequences to rejecting Jesus Christ and there are great benefits to accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing I want to tell you about real quickly this morning is this house is a shouting house. It's not a pouting house, amen. It's not a nice place to come and pout. I understand. I, I mentioned this a while ago. <clears throat> There's times you have burdens. You don't always feel like shouting. You don't always feel like smiling. I don't know that. I understand that. This world can be a heavy place. I remember one time, <clears throat> John Holyfield uh, was going through some, a tough time and, 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 and things in his family and just everything. You know how sometimes a snowball effect takes place. Everything was going wrong. Everything. Uh, he's a preacher about my age, maybe a year or two older than me. I don't know exactly, but this has been a lot of years ago. And uh, we was going to the same church, and, and anyways, he was really down and everything, and he asked Brother Carl, he said, Brother Sutherland, he said, he said, what do I do? He said, he said, everything, everything is going wrong. He said, it doesn't seem to matter what I do, everything is going wrong in my life. He said, it can't seem to get my head above the water in any way, shape, or form. And he was so down, and he was sad, and he was, uh, uh, you know, probably on the verge of being depressed over the situation. And Brother Carl said, sometimes... You just got to shout. Yeah. That's all he told him. And you know what? It wasn't too long. I remember that morning in that service. He told him that at the prayer meeting. Men had a prayer meeting before service. 
And my dear friend, it wasn't too long when they got to singing and they got to uh, uh, bragging on Jesus. He got up and ran a lap or two around the church, shouted amen, and you know what? He was just fine after that. I'm just saying to you, look, this is not a pouting house, it's a shouting house. And sometimes I might even look like I got a pouty look on my face when I come to the house of God. It's not always easy. But I'm saying to you, my dear friend, this is not a place to pout, but it's a place to give praise and honor and glory to God. It's a place to shout the victory. It's a place to give God thanks that we're saved by the grace of God. That we can afford to give. Hey, we are washed in the blood of the Lamb this morning. Aren't you glad this morning that you're not stained with sin anymore? Aren't you glad this morning that the blood is washed and cleansed? Yes. 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 I'll tell you what, the Bible says, my dear friend, that we have something to shout about. We got something to praise God about. He tells us to rejoice because our name Written. Are written back. <laughs> he didn't say rejoice because all your bills are paid. He didn't say rejoice because you're in good health. He didn't say rejoice because you got a good job. He didn't say rejoice because your family is all well. He didn't say rejoice because the country's economy is booming. He said rejoice because your name is written down. I'm glad this morning my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Nothing I've done to deserve it, but because Jesus Christ came into my heart and life, September the 26th, 1992 in Smithville, Oklahoma, as a 13 year old boy at a revival meeting on a Saturday night. I've been saved by God's grace, and my name's been written down ever since. Yeah. It's a shouting house. It's a place where we can praise and honor and worship God. It's a place where our heavy hearts can be lifted. It's a place, my dear friend, called Calvary, where our birds are picked up. It's a place where we come crawling up, but we come shouting down. I'm saying to you, my dear friend, I'm glad this morning we got a place we can give God the praise and the glory. We can raise hands to heaven and not be worried about what somebody's going to think. We can say amen and not everybody's going to turn around and look and see who said it amen. I'm saying to you, my dear friend, this is a place you can shout as long as you speak or speak in English or Spanish or whatever you speak, amen. Amen. When you come down, you can shout all you want. Amen. Thank God. There's nothing wrong with shouting. You said, well, I thought that was charismatic. You know, Baptists were shouting long before there was a charismatic oh, movement. <laughs> Listen, Baptists quit shouting because they didn't want to be identified with such. But I'm going to tell you right now, amen, Baptists have been shouting a long, long time. They've been around a long time. And we've been shouting and giving God the glory and praise. And we've been saying, amen, hallelujah, thanks be unto God, praise His holy name. A long time before there was a charismatic movement. Yep. Thank God, amen, we can still shout. We can still give God the glory and the praise. God will accept it. I'm glad, my dear friend, this morning that God loves the praise of His people. Matter of fact, you know what He said? He inhabits the praise of His people. Yes, you know what that means? He dwells in the midst of it, amen. He dwells right in the center of it. God loves to be glorified and to be honored. And my dear friend, He is worthy of such this morning. Psalm 107, verse number 21 and 22, the Bible says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. You hear the plea? He said, Oh, that men would. He said, And let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare His works. That's testifying. With rejoicing. Now, I tell you what, a publisher clearing house come to your uh, door this afternoon and had a big old fat check, and they uh, put there and said, You want publisher clearing house? And they give you that big old fat check. What are y'all going to do? Oh, thank you. <laughs> that what you're going to do? I mean, tell me, is anybody here do that? Maybe y'all got here to that disposition. I don't know. Anybody here going to say, Oh, thank you. I guess I'll take it. Anybody going to do that? Is anybody here? Come raise your hand. Don't be shy if you're that way. I don't see anybody. What are you going to do? Is anybody going to get excited? Oh, yeah. Would anybody jump up and down? Hallelujah. Would anybody holler and put their face in their hands? Oh, Would you do that? I see them do that kind of crazy stuff, have you? Yeah, they're excited. It's some money. I mean, you know, if you've got a million dollar check, you'd be doing that too, right? <laughs> Like, so I'm nothing wrong 
know what that preacher's head is. <laughs> Doesn't he know this is church? <laughs> Be calm. Settle down, preacher. I don't know what you got into you, but you know what? You're making me real uncomfortable right now. <laughs> But you know thousands of screaming fans to a football game, and when the touchdown uh, gets in the end zone, they'll all freak out and all painting all kinds of crazy. You know what? It, you, you know what I'm talking. They got all this crazy. They got a football in their head, you know, on their face. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, uh, they got stitches across here, and uh, their whole body's painted sometimes. You know what I mean? You don't think that's crazy? But we think if we come to the house of God, somebody makes a slight little noise. Oh. <laughs> Don't they know this is God's house? We're supposed to be quite as nice in this place. You should be able to hear a pin drop. And the preacher needs to be real soft. Talk to us real soft and nice. Be that to make you. Please help me. Please help me take my afternoon nap early. <laughs> Sing me a little lullaby. <laughs> oh my. I'm just saying, it's a shout. Don't be afraid to give God glory. I, it don't bother me one bit, I promise you. As long as you speak in a known tongue, even if I don't know it, you know, it could be Spanish, like I said, something else. <laughs> as long as I, 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 I my dear friend's a known tongue, you're good. Hey man, shout all you want. It'll be just fine, I promise you. It's a shouting house. It's not a power house. Not a place to come and complain and whine and bicker and bellyache. I mean, this is not a place for that. This is a place to give God glory. This is a place to give Him, my dear friend, His due. It's worthy of His name. Psalm 118, the Bible tells us here in verse 14 and 15. He goes on to tell us in Psalm 118, verses 14 and 15. He says this. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord, the valiant. Lead. Notice what he said. He said the voice of rejoicing and salvation. There's a voice to salvation. There is a sense of some sort of excitement. He says, is in, where's it at? In the tabernacles of righteousness. It's in the house of God. The voice of salvation. This rejoicing. This voice of joy. Oh, weeping may endure for the night. Yes, there's times we have wept. But joy coming in the morning. Isn't that good? Aren't you glad that weeping only endures for the night that there is a morning coming? Sometimes we're in the night. In a night season. But joy is coming in the morning. Joy is coming. Because joy is of the Lord this morning. And our joy is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Last thing I want to say here real quickly this morning. This house is a teaching house. It is not a talent house. Now I thank God for talents. And God gives people talents. Praise the Lord for them. The more the merit. Amen. Thank God for talents. And I would tell you to use your talent for the Lord. But this isn't a talent house. This isn't some place to audition for the world. We don't have that going on here. But I'm just telling you, there's some places they think it's a talent house. They think it's a show. I'm going to tell you what, we don't have a show going on. The only one going to show up and show out around here should be the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that ought to put on a show each and every week. I'm just saying this is a place for us to learn the things of God. Let it always be just that. I understand, I understand, practice, I understand, I, we, we're, we're trying to get better in our, in our singing service. I know we don't have the, the grandest of a, of a singing service. I mean, we're not professionals and all that. But you know what? We give praise to God. If we're lifting His name up. We're making a joyful noise to the Lord. And as long as we're doing that, I believe it would be acceptable to God. Do we want to get better? Yes, we do. We want to get better at that. But you know what? I don't want us to ever get to a point in place we think we have to be so perfect that we're scared to death to make a mistake. We're scared to death not to laugh about it. I told you, you know, you are saved me from the preacher saying it this morning. You know, that's funny. Amen? <laughs> a little truth to it. <laughs> so it's funny. 
I mean, you know, nothing wrong with that. I can make fun of myself. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with having a good laugh, baby. You can have a good laugh on me if I let you. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I mean, you know, I enjoy a little bit of laughter and a little bit of, I, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know what? If we can't laugh at ourselves, That's right. we're going to have some problems in this life, amen. And there's sometimes I just got to sit back and laugh at some of the things I do. That's, that's pretty funny, kid. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you've done that. And it's just pretty funny, you know. I mean, my wife has been laughed uh, uh, a lot. She laughs at me a lot, amen. <laughs> uh, it's not because I'm funny. It's because I do some dumb stuff sometimes. <laughs> now, she's funny. I laugh at her a lot, but it's because she jokes, amen. And she's got the jokes, believe me. I've <laughs> been around her. Uh, so, anyways... The fact is, though, this is a place to teach and to learn the Word of God. Somebody says, you know, why do we have Sunday school? Really, Sunday school is a learning program. That's, right. That's what it's for. It's to learn the Word of God. Wednesday night, a lot of times we have Bible study. Why do we do that? It's, it's to slow things down, dive into the Scriptures, and to learn something from the Word of God. Now, that's not always what we do on Wednesday, but... That's the purpose of having teaching. Uh, Sunday school is a great time to teach, and it brings it to each person's level. We have different classes for different ages, so they can have something down on their level that they can be taught in a way that, that they can understand it, they can comprehend it, they begin to develop truth, foundation, pillars in their life. And that is very important. We say, well, Sunday school is for kids. Sunday school is not for children only. It's for all of us. And we should always be learning. I'm still learning the Word of God. Brother Brandon, I'm still learning from that book. I've been in that book now for, uh, I don't know, uh, solidly for, I guess, about 25 years. I love to know so little. I love to know so little. There is so much in that book. It's endless. It's endless. The knowledge contained between the end of that book and, the, and, the, and the, the beginning and the end of that book, those 66 books are boundless. Boundless. It's not a man-made book. Amen. It is a God-breathed book. Yes. It's different than anything you'll ever read in your life. And you can read some things once, twice, three times, and you got everything there is contained in that book. You don't have no problems with it. This book, you can read it a lifetime. Amen. Study a lifetime. Yet there will still be things that you need knowledge of and you know not. Show us great and mighty things which we know not. Still some things that I don't know. Still some things I want to learn. This book, though, will teach us. The Bible tell us, tells us he gave us the Holy Spirit to be our guide and to be our teacher. What book does he use to guide and teach us? is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. It teaches us the way we're in we should walk. Let's stand.